Flanders and Matt Hall here with new Kansas State basketball assistant Shane Southwell. Uh, Mr. Southwell, appreciate the time, man. I know you're really busy. Thank you so much. No, thank you, guys. I'm ecstatic to, uh, to talk to you guys, ecstatic to be back. Uh, let's get it going, man. Let's do it. I mean, Flando and I are going to kind of pepper you with questions here. Um, we'll just trade back and forth, and you just kind of hit on this. But the first one is obvious. How excited are you to be back at K-State and for the opportunity you have here now? Man, to represent your, your university, your alma mater, in this facet, um, this early, um, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, it's unprecedented. Um, I'm truly, truly ecstatic. I'm truly, truly happy uh, to be a, a part of uh, Purple once again. It's something that I couldn't ask for. It's a, it's a dream. You know what I mean? I'm just floating on air right now. And then, Shane, what was the hardest thing about being an assistant at Robert Morris as opposed to your prior role at K-State? Um, just honestly, just a part of just growing into that role. Um, still fairly young and, and, and growing into that role as an assistant coach is different. You know, I joked with Jermaine Henderson and, and Coach Lowry and said, you guys didn't mentor me enough and you guys didn't school me enough <laughs> on the grind and how crazy this business and how much fun this business is. This is. Um, to be an assistant coach at the Division One level is a lot of work. But at the same time, it's just a beautiful feeling to be able to impact student athletes' life and careers. Um, it's very, very different from the GA role and the student athlete development role. So just honestly, just getting used to that and, and taking that step to another level is really, really big. And um, it was that that was probably the biggest difficulty, just the whole whole totality of being an assistant coach at the, the at the division one level. You mentioned how young you are and. I'm just wondering, like, did you ever really expect going away for one year and then getting the opportunity right away a year later to come back and, and coach a Big 12 school? Um, me and, former, and some of our guys, former teammates of mine that, that still bleed purple, Thomas Gibson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Martavius, Amari Lawrence, guys to that nature would joke about it, but I never thought about it. I was mm -hmm. so concerned with and so locked into Robert Morris University and trying to get those guys ready to, to be a part of winning. You know what I mean? And and I was so locked into to being at Robert Morris because you have to be locked into your job as an assistant yeah. coach. Um, so I never necessarily never thought about it. Uh, so it was it was just unique and and just a crazy whirlwind type of experience we are experience, uh, experiencing over these last few weeks. So, it, it, no, I never thought about it. You know, you mentioned being focused on Robert Morris, of course, while you're there, and it looked like you guys had a pretty good year, particularly in, in conference. Just what was your season like there, Robert Morris, for K-State fans who probably didn't follow it other than just seeing your record, you know, after the fact? It was great, you know what I mean? Um, for me personally, to see growth, um, and see growth at a level, at that level where you're in the non-conference, and the non-conference in that level is, is totally different from the non-conference at, uh, at a Big 12 university. Uh, so you're, you're on the road constantly and you're, you're, you're battling against teams who are probably more prepared than you are at the time, who's probably more talented and probably more glued together uh, yeah. in November and in December. Uh, so getting guys to understand that process and understand that our battle and our, our championship and our wins are gonna come more in a, in a, in a conference is really, really key. And that's something that we tried to harp on and to see that growth daily from November to December to going into conference play and our guys really understanding that and getting that uh, was really, really key and really, really special for us. And to see that on a daily basis was, was big time. Our, our guys uh, at Robin Morris never experienced, you know, championship level play. Um, they, they, some of those guys never played in the championship game, never won a championship. So to prepare those guys, uh, to be a, a be a part of championship level play is really really big and really really special. One more about Robert Morris. Uh, just wondering what one skill or thing that you could take away that really stuck out the most that you learned that you can bring back to K State. So much, man. So much. Um, honestly, just like I said, being in a different role from a GA, um, those guys looked up to me in a different different uh, facet. Uh, so bringing that that knowledge that I had. Um, growing in Robert Morris University, of being an assistant coach, obviously recruiting, um, and just being more connected with the with the head coach and learning from a head coach of Andy Tools' nature, who who's a great X and O guy, great 
great mind for the game of basketball and also a CEO. Uh, it was just great to learn. Great to learn. Under that. Under that. I know with you being a Robert Morris and having so much responsibility there, you were, like you said, very focused on their season. But what was your impression if you even got to make one, you know, of K-State this year and what you saw um, from K-State this year? Um, just just the connectivity uh, that that was that was missing. Yeah. And the fact that it was so many games where they were right there, you know what I mean? And, and just needed one more play one more stop or one more basket to just take them over the take them over the hump whether that was to win a particular a game or to get your, just to get your season going and build some yeah. momentum and so many games came down to the last few minutes and then that's the part where I really really would, would watch and under try to understand and look out from afar from ESPN 3 ESPN ESPN yeah. plus and ESPN 2 and ESPN um, those are the things that I really really saw that that jumped out to me but I like I said I didn't get to watch much you'd be so concerned about the guys in your league guys at your level and the scouts that you have to prepare for on a daily basis that I really didn't get to see much yeah Brad Corn obviously took the the head coaching position at Southeast Missouri State and he's the one you're replacing so I guess what does K-State lose in Brad Corn? A great X and O guy. Uh, Brad was also great with relationships. He had the ability to to uh, to relate to all. You know what I mean? Relate to everybody, from the players to the staff to the administration. Brad Brad did a great job, and I know he's going to carry that over to Simo. Uh, also, Brad did a great job of being a player development guy, and helping guys get better from the likes of Dean Wade to the two freshmen from Antonio Gordon and Montavious Murphy. Um, Brad has done a great job in the player development. Uh, it was it was funny to talk to him a little bit uh, over the last few days, and he's saying how much he wants to focus on player development because that's something that he was always great at, and um, that's something that Kansas State is going to miss. And hopefully, I can step in and, and provide that same uh, level of expertise. You know, and on that note, I'm not trying to ask you to compare yourself to Coach Corn or anything, but on the flip side, what's something that you think you can provide that might be unique or, or really valuable for this staff? Uh, some of the some of those things are just absolutely being bleeding purple. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I wore the jersey, so I know what it's like. I know what it's like to win at Kansas State. Um, also, you know, being closer to age, being relatable, being a bridge. Uh, for the for the staff and to the players is something that's very very key in today's day and age, um, and also player development. You know, working with guys in a, at, at Robert Morris University, helping guys become all league guys, um, even from the likes of helping Barry Brown and Xavier Sneed in their career early in their career um, as a GA. Some of that player development still stuck with me, and something that I think is very very key. For our guys, and we got a young team, so player development right. is really, really going to be important for our guys to get better, better on a daily basis. And that's something that I already know that I bring to the table. That um, that's something that we're going to strive to to do and to be better at. You know, with, with Shane Southwell, the new assistant coach for K State, uh, obviously with K State Online, the Rivals Network, everyone likes to talk recruiting. Um, can you just ramble about your feelings about recruiting, how you attack it, and maybe some of the places you might hone in on. Obviously, you know, me being from New York City in a tri-state area, definitely got to attack that. Um, but, you know, Kansas State over the last few years with Coach Weber and even Coach Martin, you know, we're going to tackle the, tackle the entire country. You know what I mean? We have had guys and success in Florida. We've had success, obviously, in the Texas area. And recently we've had success in um, the Illinois area and in Chicago. So we're going to tackle everywhere around the country. Uh, we've done a great job with that. And it's all about relationships, building, building relationships, whether it's in, like I said, in D.C., Florida, New York, Kansas State has always done a great job of tackling every part of this nation. And we're going to continue to do that. You know, sticking on recruiting for a second, the class you'll have coming into coach as freshman next year, it changes depending on the day. But as a top 15 class by rivals, it's it's almost certainly the best class, you know, Coach Weber's had at K-State. And again, we know you've been away from K-State and had another job for the past year. But how familiar are you with this class coming in and, and any thoughts you might have on it? Big time class. Um, I was a, I was lucky enough to be at the visit with Nigel Pack. He comes from a great family 
And obviously the summer that he had and the spring that he had and also the high school season that he had, he's obviously a great player, uh, a top 100 kid who's going to come in and, and bring some some good punch to that point guard position for us. And, you know, Sel Miguel is also, you know, just straight up and down the dog. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we produce at Kansas State University, guys that come in with that toughness and that energy. And uh, also, you know, we've been on loop. And Dave Young for a while now, those guys being the Kansas City and Mocan kids, playing them for Mocan AU, which is right down the road. So we know about those guys, and I know about those guys a little bit. Didn't get a chance to have a relationship with those guys and, and, right. and a couple of other guys that we signed in this class. But um, we're definitely going to build that relationship, and I can't wait. <laughs> I'm ecstatic, man. Absolutely. We're static for you, man. So yeah, on to the next portion. I mean, this is just the word association for the coaching staff and, and some of your peers around you. Uh, just the first word or phrase that pops in your mind when we say this guy's name. And I'll start with the first name of oh, Bruce oh, Weber. Big Daddy Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Bruce, man. Big Daddy Bruce. A few things pop in my mind. A legend, um, but also just a beautiful mind. It's as simple as that. Everybody that's around uh, Coach Webb on a daily basis know how intelligent he is and how smart he is and how calculated he is. <laughs> so yep. that just a beautiful mind is as simple as that and just straight up and down a legend. How long did it, I mean, I, I, I think people consider Flanders and I to be Bruce Weber homers, we've been told before. <laughs> so we don't, ask, we don't ask this in a negative way. How long did it take you to get used to him? You mentioned like the beautiful mind reference and how intelligent he is and he is a little bit unique. I like guess a player, yes, how long did it take you to get accustomed to him the way he is? For me personally, not too long. For me personally, because I'm a historian of the game and to watch what he did for, for Southern Illinois, to watch what he did for Illinois University with the, with the special backcourt that they had, wow. I knew a little bit about Bruce coming into when he came in in 2014, 2013, I'm sorry. And it wasn't necessarily hard because me and him would come back and talk about former players and things of that nature and guys that I already knew, I knew their names. So it wasn't necessarily hard for me off the court, <laughs> <laughs> but on the court, you know, it was definitely difficult for me because just simply because it was learning the new system, learning the new guy, learning the new coach who was very, very different from Frank Martin and definitely is different on his approach. Right. But you know, Bruce is not a hard guy to, 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 to understand necessarily. You just have to be around him on a daily basis. Um, and that's just something that he does. He puts on a, a, a front for the beginning of, for people that don't really know him. But he's a great guy. He's a beautiful, yep. beautiful mind, like I said. Uh, same thing. When I say Chris Lowry's name, what comes to mind for you? Oh, man, so much. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, defensive stalwart, man, like just – straight up and down a defensive genius man just and I know we don't want to use it in terms of basketball but you know I just automatically think of a guy that just X and O's on the defensive end is just special top notch yeah. uh, it's just unparalleled it's just simple as that what's 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 Chris Lowry's uh coach Lowry obviously we've gotten to know him really well over the years but I mean what's What's the thing about him that and makes his house? It seems like a bunch of recruits. His house seems to be the home where everyone comes when recruits come to town. For sure, <laughs> you know, coach, coach, coach Lowry does a great job of being relatable. Um, he uh, obviously knows how it feels to be a student athlete and a great one at that. And he also knows mm -hmm. how it feels to be a head coach. You know what I mean? He's been a, done a great job being an associate head coach at Kansas State for a while now, and he just knows how to connect with families. Uh, players, former coach, uh, coaches. He just does a great job of being a connector. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's probably the word that, 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 that's probably best fit for Coach Lowry. And then no, next is, it. yeah. And then next is the, I mean, the newest one. I mean, obviously before you was Jermaine Henderson, the newest addition. And he made a splash, it seemed right away with getting Celta Miguel and stuff. What's the first word that comes to mind for him? <laughs> Fun, uh, exuberant, <laughs> uh, contagious energy, honestly, man. His energy is so contagious throughout the, the office, throughout the basketball uh, court. Uh, his ability to, to get guys going, to steer guys in the right direction is just straight up and down cont uh, contagious. You know, he does a great job of bringing guys together and bringing that energy on a daily basis. And it's consistent. It's consistent energy that is, that is immensely needed on a staff. 
and and, and players respect that, and his his peers respect that. Now, to, to your credit, sticking with Jermaine for a second with you, you you know, you took a, I don't know if risk is the right word, but you had the courage to go and work somewhere else and, and learn some more. But the point I'm getting at is you and Jermaine both more or less promoted from within, you know, in that same role. Uh, I guess what does that matter? As I mean, how much important is that to know that you have a head coach that's going to look to guys that, you know, are on his staff and have worked with him when he's looking to make promotion? That's big. So that, that means that your boss is watching and your boss is taking, taking note of what you bring to the table. And that's all that you ever ask for. And no matter where the role is, Bruce Weber does a great job of taking input from everybody. You know what I mean? And for me, watching Jermaine as a GA, I learned so much. Um, just like simply, simple, just being consistent on a daily basis. That's something that Jermaine does a great job of. And that's something that I took took notice of and, and, and did the same at um, Robert Morris University. We want to ask about a couple of guys who aren't in a traditional assistance just to get them some, some attention too, for sure. Um, starting with Drew Sparrow, I guess I would ask you like the same with the rest of the guys to describe him and what you think of him, but what's his job like? Like how much is on his plate? Oh, it's a, it's a ton. Um, from travel to camp, to gear, to, 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 to absolutely everything you can ask for that deals with Kansas state men's basketball, Drew Sparrow is on top of. And, and I mean that with the utmost, Respect. He's on top of it all, and that's a that's a difficult feat to have at the Big 12 level. And he's done a great job, and he continues to do a great job for the entire program. His his ability to connect with the players is also something that's very very important. Uh, you know, he still has a strong relationship with a lot of our alumni guys, and and, and Drew does a great job, and he also has a has a really really good basketball uh, mind. Obviously, we know his dad is a longtime coach. Um, so Drew brings a lot to the table that a lot of people don't even know. Drew is very, very important to the staff and it always, always has and always will be. Now let's talk about the dude that's getting all these guys yoked on the team. <laughs> and and ben, ben O'Donnell, I saw that he put out a put out like a workout, his regime. It seems to be pretty tough for a lot of people. KSO guys. I did, I did not try it. <laughs> I did not put an effort on it. And he, so. he, and he sent me the video before he knew what was going down. And I was just like, D.O.D., man, uh, I'm, not, I'm not on that wave right now. We, we got he needs, some time. I need a summer, just like I'm yeah, right? to get and, used to you again. And he's got to start with, like, one of those lifts, not six <laughs> in a circuit the first time he sends it to you. But, I mean, hey, it's, it's good that he has the, the bar race. Ferocious. Yeah, what does he bring to the table for you guys? He's, he's ferocious, man. He, he brings it every single day. He brings a lot to the table. Obviously, you've seen our guys over the years transform their body from their freshman to their senior years, and sometimes even our junior college guys. What he's done for, for guys like Barry Brown and, and, and all those different guys and Mike McGurl, you see his body compared to Absolutely. our guys in our league. Mm -hmm. it's, it's top notch and how physical and the, the toughness that he provides in his – and his his heaven, his office, and his his heaven that we call the weight room. Uh, he does a great job of building character and toughness to our guys, and that's something that I look for when I went to the next the next uh, job. And and it was something that uh, is unprecedented. Ben O'Donnell is a, a big time a strength and conditioning coach, and is special. Once again, it's uh, Grant Flanders and myself with Shane Southwell, new assistant for Kansas State, fresh off a really good uh, single season at Robert Morris. Uh, Coach Southwell, just a few questions we have left. These are kind of obvious, and I know they're kind of big picture, and I'm sorry if you have to think right off the top of your head, but what's the best memory or just maybe a most cherished memory from your time as uh, on the staff, not as a player, uh, but on the staff at Kansas State? Oh, man. Um, phew, that's, that's a tough one. A, a lot comes Lots to of choices. Mind. A lot comes to mind, honestly. Uh, you know, everybody knows my relationship with Barry Brown. So, you know, just playing, developing him and helping his career and working him out. And then uh, for Cam Stokes to go down in that Texas Tech game early in that yeah. Elite Eight year and him kind of becoming uh, a leader right under our eyes and, and, and the, bringing guys into a players only practice that everybody. I think around Kansas State knows uh, to, to see that is something that I will always remember because the next game was a 38 and then that momentum for the next year. And then the, the year after that is just unprecededent. You know what yep. I mean? And winning the Big 12 
and going into Elite Eight, I think that's all connected to, to that practice that Barry Brown had and him showing that leadership. So if you ask me, the one moment that I that comes to mind is just simply that that night, <laughs> right yeah. after the game when Cam, Cam Stokes got hurt and he's texting everybody on the staff, what do we need to do to get better? What do we need to do to um to withstand this injury? I mean, man, it's crazy to think about how long ago that was. First of all, as we talk about it, but then you're, but then you're right. He had that talk. Then you guys beat, you know, one night beat every team in the Big Twelve in a row. I think after that point, then you won the Big Twelve. Then went to Elite Eight next year. It just, I mean, I'm rambling now. Then Flanders will have a question, but it's interesting and kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I expected you to say going to the Elite Eight. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Like you know that kind of stuff, and you and you didn't. That's just that's why coaches are different than us, I guess. <laughs> but that's cool. So it's all connected. It's all connected. Right. It always got to start somewhere. And if, for me personally, I think that was the start. Yeah. I mean, a little different question, but along the same lines, the best memory you had as a player at K-State. Wow. wow. You just went to the archives. You <laughs> old thinking about that. <laughs> um, see, I'll, I'll be a little bit more vague and a little more general, and I'll, I'll say winning the Big 12 championship on that. Sure. Uh, I can't think back of a practice where – Ronnie Magruder brought us all in a player only practice and uh, and it got us going that way. So we didn't ne- necessarily have that. <laughs> so sure. and, or I can't remember. It's been that long. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I would probably say winning a Big 12. That's obviously we didn't win a Big 12 championship or any conference championship since 1977. And right. Being a part of that team and cherishing that moment with our guys, uh, that brotherhood that we had, that family that we still we still connect with to this day. Um, that's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. And hey, last question. I apologize for making you be redundant here because you've been very clear about you know your excitement and how happy you are to be back at K State. But anything you want to leave K State fans with as you wrap this up in this conversation? Um, um, honestly, let's get it. Let's do it. Let's bleed purple, emo. Let's go get it.